Hey guys, Jason Shepard here, M08.com. On the downwind here, at least the wind behind me, showing you turns around a point. And the big part of turns around a point is one, knowing where the wind is at, that's why I put it behind me, and two, picking an excellent point. So I've been looking, and I found a great point out here. I'm gonna use this big clump of trees in the middle of this horse track here. It's what Ocala is famous for, our horses, for sure. And you'll see when I come on the downwind and beam that point, I'm going to go ahead and just set my wingtip down on that tree right there. And my goal is to maintain that same distance around this clump of trees at all times. Now, I'm on the downwind now, so I can kind of shallow this out because it, what's it, it's, it's wanting to push me on through now. So now once I get to this point here, I start to steepen that up a little bit, right? So I don't get pushed away too much. There we go. So. My, my question I'm asking is, am I maintaining the same distance around that clump of trees the entire time? That's the goal here. Now, still, a common student pilot error is to get so fixated on that clump of trees that if you get to look outside and fly the airplane, there's still obstacles. We're doing this down at 800 feet, so you have to be careful. You, there's obstacles, there's traffic, there's so many things to worry about here. Now, as we go through, and now I enter into a little bit of a headwind here. And then once I come up to the other 90 degree side, it's going to be pushing me towards it. I'm going to begin to shallow out some of this bank here. Knowing where you're at in relation to the wind at all times is going to be crucial. Still looking for other air traffic here. Continuing to come around. Maintain that same sight picture. Those trees shouldn't be getting any bigger, any smaller. Should be looking the same each and every time as we're coming on through. Just holding this, holding this, maintaining your altitude as well as you're coming on through, taking some power out. I climbed up a little bit. Look at that sight picture, too. It's the same distance, but it's a little bit. It's about 50 feet too high there, so I'm fixing that now, bringing some power on back, adjusting that as I keep coming around. Maintain that same sight picture, but still it's a visual maneuver. I'm still looking outside. Now, it's easy for me because I don't have anyone sit in the left seat. It's tough when uh, when, sometimes doing the, when I'm doing this in the right seat, showing a student, and they're sitting in the left seat. It can be kind of difficult here. But coming on around and complete your full 360, ask your check right examiner, ask your flight instructor, would you like another turn? Do you need another one? Just to clarify, typically you just do a turn, then discontinue, and fly on out like this. But sometimes they'll say, you know what, show me another half a turn. Do another one for me. Just so you know, just so you're all on the same page. Listen, ground reference maneuvers really get neglected. The reason I say that is it's one of the first maneuvers you learn. Turns around a point, S turns across the road. You learn these things first, and then you get into the fun stuff, the landings, the stalls, the slow flight, all that. And we really neglect ground reference maneuvers. So get out and find some time, especially before your check ride, to practice ground reference maneuvers. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see ya. I wrote the Private Pilot Blueprint with the intention of, if I could do my flight training over, what I wish someone would have told me. And I want that book to be yours for free. All I ask is that you pay shipping. Visit privatepilotblueprint.com to get your free copy.